Welcome to my views and news, some new stories for you from Sudan, where relative calm was seen on Tuesday, less uh, fighting, almost no airstrikes. Talks have resumed reportedly in Jada, thirdly resumption of fighting in Yala, North Darfur, fourthly a key bridge, only bridge available uh, connecting an island with the capital city of Sudan has been closed by rapid support force members reported. Firstly, viewers, uh, on Tuesday, there was relative calm in Sudan. We received reports of clashes, uh, sounds of uh, artillery fire, Gunshots were heard in Umadirman, Bari, Khartoum, Santal. But we could not confirm any large-scale clashes between rapid support forces and Sudanese army on Tuesday. There was fighting close to uh, Armored Core. We know that uh, uh, RSF are trying to advance towards Armored Core. We have seen them, RSF member, position close to Armored Core. They took positions in a neighborhood uh, to the east of Armored Corps a few days ago. So they are here. They are trying to encircle Armored Corps, but no large-scale fighting. No air strikes. Interestingly, I could not confirm any air strikes on Tuesday in Sudan, in, in Khartoum, Bari, Madarman. Military planes were seen flying over the capital city. So we can say that uh, Tuesday was relatively calm. Uh, but it does not mean that everything is back to normal. Obviously, two sides are making preparations for new offensives. Uh, rapid support forces are definitely uh, planning to launch new offensives. SAF as well, Sudanese Armed Forces too. It was a temporary calm. We have seen in the past as well. And after temporary calm, we saw in the past that uh, fighting intensified. Same could happen. Because at the table, nothing agreed so far. Talk starting though. Today it was confirmed that the two sides have resumed talks on ceasefire. Two sides uh, agreed on ceasefire uh, around two weeks ago. A seven-day ceasefire was put in place, partially implemented. Then second round of talks, five days ceasefire agreed, implemented for two days, talks collapsed. Sudanese army withdrew from talks. Saudi American observers, uh, representatives announced uh, suspension of talks. But then Sudanese army showed surprise, saying it was willing to, be, to remain part of negotiations. And then talks resumed. We saw statements from the Saudi and American representatives saying that the two parties, RSF and Sudanese army representatives, were still in Jeddah. So talks resumed as mediators were engaged with the two sides. Talks resumed, confirmed, but any progress? No. No news of any progress made so far. Some other channels. Uh, also being activated uh, to find a way out. IGAD is active, Afghan Union to some extent too, but mainly talks are being held in Jada. Another round of talks starting, let's uh, see uh, what happens, let's hope that uh, something good comes out of this meeting, uh, which will go on for some days between RSF and Sudanese uh, military. Uh, before the suspension of talks, uh, after suspension of talks, we saw that U.S. imposed sanctions on four entities. Two entities owned by Sudanese army, two entities owned by rapid support forces. Junaid and Taradiv, two companies of rapid support forces, they were sanctioned. Sudanese uh, army's uh, defense manufacturing uh, uh, department agency was sanctioned too. So, US sent a message. US announced to impose visa restrictions too on the two sides top leaders. No visa restrictions announced so far. US is adopting carrot and stick policy. It is offering financial aid to uh, 
but at the same time it is threatening to impose sanctions too. Let's see, can this policy work? We'll see. Talks resumed in Jada. Third viewers, resumption of fighting today. Just a few minutes ago, we confirmed that fighting resumed in Nayala. So while there was relative calm in Chattal Khartoum, Bari Madarman, in Nayala, a few minutes ago, fighting resumed. Nayala is in South Darfur. Almost on daily basis, I update you about situation in Darfur. Yesterday, I reported about devastation in Aljanina. Aljanina totally devastated. People fleeing the city, West Darfur, Aljanina, towards Chad. Uh, tens of thousands have entered Chad. City destroyed. Uh, armed gangs patrolling the streets of Aljanina. Infrastructure destroyed. Aid organizations, offices attacked. Same happened in Zalinji, Central Darfur. Humanitarian crisis there. People cooking leaves. Uh, no food to eat, no electricity, no telecom services. Again, armed gangs looting everything. RSF backed gangs in both Zalinji, Central Darfur, uh, Aljanina, Western Darfur. And now in Niyala. There were heavy rains in Yala recently and uh, flood is being reported. Uh, due to this flood, uh, a bridge connecting two parts of the city became uh, dysfunctional. It is not in a position to be used. So while the city is split into two parts because of uh, floods, heavy rains, fighting resumed a few hours ago reportedly. It's difficult to say uh, how many have been injured or killed, but uh, overall, a catastrophe is engulfing entire Darfur, central, western, uh, southern, northern as well. In Kotam, we saw that uh, rapid support forces uh, swept across Kotam a few, two to three days ago. Uh, dozens were injured, more than one dozen were killed. People fled towards uh, al Fashir. Al Fashir is not safe as well. Gradually, we are seeing that this uh, instability is engulfing uh, entire Darfur, all Darfur zones. People trying to flee towards uh, Chad. Lastly, viewers, uh, a key bridge, first suspension bridge in uh, built in Sudan, has been closed. The bridge links an island with Khartoum, uh, capital of Sudan. Tuti Island, small island. Uh, island is uh, the place where blue and white Niles merge. And uh, here this island uh, is surrounded by Umadirman, Khartoum, Bari, three cities. People uh, can use ferries to read the island and there is one bridge connecting Tuti with Khartoum, Khartoum Central. Uh, this bridge is suspension bridge. It was the first suspension bridge uh, in Africa when it was built uh, more, more than a decade ago, a decade and a half ago, I think. And uh, this bridge has been closed. Who closed it? It's not clear. But people are saying that rapid support force members were in control of this bridge, control of the areas close to the bridge. So that is why they have closed the bridge. Why? We don't know because uh, does this bridge have military significance? What was the purpose of closing the bridge? It just shows that RSF fighters are in a position to close bridges. They closed Shambhat too, I think. A few days ago, we showed pictures of uh, 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 containers being placed on Shambhat bridge by RSF members. On eastern side of Shambhat bridge, Shambhat links Bari with uh, Umidraman. Eastern side of Shambhat bridge was closed by rapid support force members a few days ago. 
Now they have closed Tuti uh, Island uh, suspension bridge. Uh, so that shows how uh, strong RSF fighters are in Khartoum, Bari, Umm Almost on daily basis, we're receiving reports about the new territories captured by them, new sites captured by them. No signs of any decisive blow to rapid support forces in this war so far. Having said that, we cannot say RSF has defeated the Sudanese army, no. Sudanese army is there, uh, rapid support forces, there too in different pockets. Stalemate persists. Take forage.